This is Cork FM 98.2 in the city with your latest news and our top story this hour. Latest figures showing the rate of suicide in Cork City and County was almost twice the national average, according to figures from the Office of Suicide Pre- Prevention and the HSE. Of the 451 suicides in 2015, 375 were male and 76 were female. More worryingly, Ireland has the highest rate for child suicide of girls in Europe. The shocking statistic was highlighted at the World Congress on Women's Health, held recently in Dublin and hosted jointly by the National Women's Council of Ireland and Trinity College Dublin. The growth of mental health in our youth is an epidemic. There's no doubt about it. It's an absolute epidemic. And we're going to lose a whole generation here if we don't actually stop and take stock of what's going on and look at prevention. As a country, we're not the best at prevention in any area, but we have to look at prevention. I mean, when you look at exercise, I'd say every second person that comes into me, I'm recommending exercise, without a shadow of a doubt. We all know you can't help but feel better when you exercise. You can't stop it. So in an ideal world, you would have the likes of Laura or whoever going into a school from the age of seven or eight and teaching them the benefits of exercise letting them see you can talk for Ireland but unless you actually let them physically experience it you may as well hit your head off the wall so get these kids whatever their size it should be part of a curriculum part of an exam in my opinion every child leaving secondary school should be running able to run or fast walk if they're physically impaired 5k without a shadow of a doubt what does that in turn do to our health system you know what are the implications let alone our mental health system everything it's a no-brainer what will it cost penny pittance But does anyone even contemplate doing it? Why? It's insane. Same thing, the stuff that I'm doing and plenty of people like me go in. I think we should start age seven and eight at least once a year in an ideal world, a lot more than once a year. Our kids are growing up in a world that's technologically run. Most of their parents have no idea what that world is all about. Most of those kids have no idea of the implications of it. They are all addicted, there's no doubt. I'm probably addicted, we're all addicted. But whatever addiction as an adult, Multiply that by a thousand and you might come close to where a child is because a lot of these kids are growing up like this. So if you take it right back to kids now at two younger, one, two, three years of age who are stuck in front of this because it's now the babysitter. And don't get me wrong, I have four kids. I've sat them in front of Barney and all the lads for years. But <clears throat> I think there was a bit more interaction on that one and it was a bit more learning. But anyway, there was also a time span because it was automatic. Our kids spent time outside. They spent time on play dates. They spent time playing. And that is developmentally essential. It's like one of the massive building blocks in their lives. So if we're knocking those blocks out, which we are, because these kids aren't learning how to play and develop and learn how to win it. They don't learn how to win and lose. They don't learn how to partake in different things, use their imagination. So they've lost these blocks now because they're living on this. And then they go into school and they're finding it difficult to mix and make friends and they're wondering why they can't communicate with other kids and their parents are wondering why they can't play with other kids. Well, hello, because they haven't been playing. My name is Laura Dorgan, a fitness works gym cork and owner of Laura Dorgan Fitness. I recently have become aware of the social anxiety among students and decided to start my own mental health workshops, exercising your mental health. So I go around and visit schools. I spend the first 10 to 15 minutes speaking to students about anxiety, depression, social media and how it can affect today's students when it comes up to their exam time. After that then, myself and the students will go out to the schoolyard and we take part in activities stressing the point that exercise doesn't have to be strenuous, it can be fun. In Tremor Road in in Cork, and she's um, the owner of Laura Dorgan Fitness. So she's going to give a talk for 15-20 minutes, and then we'll be going down to the hall afterwards. My name is Catherine Zen, and my own personal training of Laura Dorgan Fitness. So I suppose, this is your
loved it from start to finish. Um, Laura had them up and active, um, enjoying themselves, laughing, joking, and gave it gave it from her own point of view. Before she, she spoke about it in the library first, um, gave her own life experiences, and then after that just made made activities and and exercising a, a fun fun thing to do and it's something that the kids really enjoyed and, and, and delighted. It was a different slant coming, a different voice, something new, something different, somebody from the outside coming in saying what they're hearing from teachers on a, on a regular basis. It's, it's great that they hear it from a, a different source as well. Oh yeah, it's definitely good to Absolutely. keep active, yeah. You know, it's much easier to, you know, be told, you know, do a few sprints or, you know, do a few push-ups and stuff like that rather than, you know, doing it yourself because you're under pressure then to do it for somebody else, like. It's all about finding something you like, I suppose. Yeah. Just get, get into it. Yeah. There's something there for everyone, definitely. It's just fun, yeah. And as well, the more active you are, you don't have time to think about like bad stuff or whatever, and yeah. don't have time to think of issues and problems, so it's good.